Hi everyone, uh, you're looking at a, uh, a view of my computer screen in my office. Uh, this was uh, designed to be a, a video, a podcast for the class uh, that I was unable to attend. Well, here it's coming up on, on Monday. So uh, um, I'll see all of you uh, later on Wednesday and Friday of, of week three. So uh, week three is really uh, getting into somewhat of a different direction from what we've just covered. Uh, that namely being binary and ternary forms, these standardized forms that kind of serve the purpose for us to look at much larger scale forms uh, later on in the book, and also later on in history too. So you have to realize that here, this chapter 24, um, is the focus is on invention, fugue, other contrapuntal genres. Now we've looked at counterpoint last year, um, specifically related to species counterpoint. That is the idea of crafting music with a melodic line and not with harmony. And as we started to introduce harmony, we, we see that these things kind of compete a little bit, but they also tend to kind of blend together. Um, I'm looking at a, a piece of music by J.S. Bach. It's the suite number one for cello. It's a solo cello piece. You can see written in G major. It's a very famous piece. Um, many of you have probably heard it before, especially this, this opening prelude. Gosh, I can't imagine uh, the amount of times that this piece has been used in, in advertisements and things like that, but it, it really is truly uh, a joyous piece of music. It's really wonderful. Her uh, Mar Elizabeth Marvin in the book brings up two concepts to kind of introduce you to the idea of Baroque melody. Now remember, the, the Baroque is, is, is ending at that the uh, time that, that Bach is, is writing music, right? It, it ends, this period ends with his death in 1750. The classical period that follows is really characterized by a more simple uh, approach to composition a more clarified approach to composition that maybe we're all more familiar with. That is the idea of a melody with accompaniment. Now, Baroque uh, music is not necessarily that clear cut. So when we analyze melodies or we look at the compositional techniques that they were using, there's some things that are, that are quite different that I want to point out. One is that there's just a lot more notes. And the reason why is because I think they were, they were interested in these concepts that are housed in this term, Fortspinnung. On page 486 in the textbook, she introduces you to this term, for Spinnung, a German term that, that literally means spinning out. I kind of like to, to think of it as a, as a web, right? A web, in, in some cases, is very complex. If you look at the amount of, of, uh, of tangles and lines and length in scale that a spider web has, um, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. There's a lot to it, but when you step back, it's quite simple in its design just like a piece like this. Um, Forge spinning is the idea that um, you have continuous motion, like perpetual motion. And you can see there's not one moment in this piece where there's a rest, or at least in this movement. Um, this is a characteristic of the spinning out technique of, of the late Baroque, and especially of Bach's solo uh, instrumental music. Um, he wrote six of these cello suites, and he wrote a number of partitas for solo violin, and certainly we see this in the, his keyboard works, too. But these, uh, this continuous motion, these, this idea of phrase, which is very different from the idea of this four-bar phrase we've looked at in binary form or the music of Haydn, but these continuous melodic and harmonic sequences, that is, patterns that, that are never-ending, or if they do end, it introduces a new pattern. Constant changes of key, elided phrases, all of these things. And really, she, she makes the point, it's a good one, to analyze this music really makes, uh, you have to focus on, on identifying these cadences and sequent types. But the phrase lengths aren't that important because spinning out the melody is very much about the stream of consciousness. I want to look at this here. I'm just going to play a little bit of this for you here um, so you can hear the, the, opening, uh, the opening measures to this piece. So you can see here that it's it's very uh, continuous in its motion, all 16th notes, and you start to understand that the entire piece is really built on one kind of arpeggiated pattern. Uh, that was Bach's intention, right? Um, what gives the piece uh, 
uh, interest, I think, is this changing harmony, much like when you, you probably know the prelude in C major that we looked at last year in uh, book one of the Well-Tempered Clavier, that you're listening to a slow motion uh, a progression, but it allows the performer to kind of uh, condense, stretch out, and speed up these phrases, really make it expressive. What's at the heart of for spinning or this spinning out technique is this idea of compound melody. And that is, is that you can actually have multiple lines heard at the same time. We don't see it, but we can hear it. And that idea here you can is probably best described in, in this specific line here, I'm pointing to the first measure, is that you have these upper notes, this neighbor figure, and so forth, and then you have a bass line, right? Now those kind of separate in time, and this is a trick of the ear, right? We don't see this, but if you really focus on maybe two instruments kind of playing this back and forth, you get this idea that it's it's kind of like a conversation. But what's really amazing, it's created by one instrument, one voice. Let me play that opening again. Here the bass line is just pulsing twice a measure. Almost like it is kind of a, an oompa oompa kind of a thing with, with an offbeat. Um, not to make light of this, but it gives you the sense that there's really multiple streams of melodies going on at once. Uh, Elizabeth Marvin defines this as a compound melody, right? So the compound melody is just a single line, right? And here in this case, the uh, cello, and on page uh, uh, 488 and 487, she introduces the Bach Cello Suite number two, the same concept. You have several melodic strands uh, that's going over uh, a type of uh, harmonic progression. Now, the other thing that is really typical of a compound melody is the idea of a step progression. Um, or in some ways like a step sequence. The step progression is the idea of a progression moving by step, and you can see her example on page 48. But here, one way that you can um, understand how this is um, spinning out is to keep the pattern steady, but then moving down. In this case, moving down by, by step. This is not typical of the classical era progression, but you can see it in this example right here. And I'm pointing out the very top line of this second page, right? And so forth. Now, my singing aside, you get the idea if you have to listen to a recording that you see that the, the notes of this slightly change. We have a pedal point of A, A, A. The compound melody, it, it, it doesn't go away. But what's changing here is the chord is being stretched out. It's really kind of a cool thing. And that's one of the things that uh, I think is important when she introduces chapter 24, this idea of compound melody step progression being part of this compositional technique called Fort Spinnung.